Hi everyone, thank you for joining the virtual dental shadower session. We want to remind you that in order to get your hours, you will have to take a short quiz. And as long as you get three out of five on the quiz, you'll earn your hours. Uh, the quiz link will be located in our link tree, which is in our Instagram bio. Um, all right, let's get started. We are very fortunate to have Ali for today's session. I'm handing the mic to you. Feel free to start whenever you want. Okay, thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Nelly Manukian. I am an incoming D1 dental student at Herman Ostro School of Dentistry of USC. I basically said everything just then. Um, so I'm currently working at Dr. Joseph Sarkeesian's office. He is a general dentist in Glendale, California. I'm going to go through a few things that um, got me to dental school, and hopefully it will help you out as well throughout your journey. Um, so I'm going to talk about factors I considered when picking my dental school. Um, there is curriculum, community, location, and price. There's obviously a bunch of other factors as well, but these four were the main ones that I was kind of concerned with or really focused on. Um, curriculum is really, really important because every school kind of has a little bit of um, a variation of how they teach and how they set up their courses and what courses they teach. So it's important that you guys do your research and see which schools are more fitting for you because not all schools are the same. For example, you, at USC, they have a completely different curriculum where they teach science-based courses through PBL, and PBL stands for problem-based learning. So instead of having just a normal like lecture types, um, like lecture types, uh, what do you call it, course or class, um, you have a group, like a group setup. So in a group, you guys go through and learn a case and go home and research yourself um, certain parts of the case that you should discuss when you guys get back. So that's how you kind of go through your science courses um, in dental school. So again, you might think that, you know, dental school, it doesn't matter, you know, each dental school is going to teach the same thing, but it really does matter. So you should look into that um, when you're signing up for your um, signing up for dental school. Um, community is also important. You need to research and kind of look into what type of community that each dental school has um, because they vary um, from school to school again. The best way kind of to gauge the community is if you go and I know during COVID it's going to be kind of hard, but if you go in person and do a tour or even talk to dental uh, students that go there, they, you can get a better insight as to like what the community is like in each dental school. So then there is location. Um, this was something that was pretty important for me because I kind of wanted to stay in California and stay close to home. Um, so that varies from person to person. So if you want to move out, if you or move away from home or move out of state, that's another thing to consider. Um, or if you want to stay close to home, then you'd have to choose schools that maybe are around your um, area. And then, of course, there's price. Dental school is very, very, very pricey. Um, I, it's this, there's going to be a small percentage of people that are able to just pay for dental schools, you know, straight up. So don't let price be a major determining factor, but definitely look into the different prices for each school. There is, um, for example, UCLA is for sure the least pricey school in California. I don't know about for the rest of the U.S., but um, UCLA is I think like 200,000 or a little bit less than $200,000 um, than most schools. Most schools are ranging around like 450,000 or 400,000. So yes, it's very pricey, but there is a bunch of ways that you can pay back your um, pay back for schooling. So don't let it, don't, don't let just the price make you not want to go to dental school. 
Okay, so GPA and extracurric- extracurriculars that got me into dental school. So my GPA was a 3.75 in my undergraduate um, school, which was Cal State Northridge. Um, and I was a biology major. So I'm proud of my GPA. It could have been higher, but it could always have been lower. Um, as long as you have a 3.5 or above, you should be pretty okay. And with a good DAT score, you should be pretty good for applying to dental school. And then the extracurriculars that got me um, or helped me get into dental school, I guess, is the is dental office exposure community service, dance, and research. I'm going to touch more in depth on the first two. Um, Dental office exposure is very important. Um, It's actually needed for um, applying to dental school. You need to at least have shadowed at a general dentist's office um, for, I think, the hours is like 50 or 100 hours or something like that. So um, it's really important and it is needed. And then the community service was also a big factor because they do ask about how you served your community. And um, I'm gonna go into depth on what I did and what you can do. Um, But then dance and research. So dance was something that was my personal kind of favorite thing to do. Um, Dental schools don't just wanna see that you're good, you're book smart or you're good at, um, you know, getting your classes together, together, getting, um, you know, a good DAT score uh, and or like getting, you know, the textbook community service, like the basic things. They also want to see that you're a per- an individual person that has different interests. So um, dance was a big um, portion of my application because I based my um, personal statement off of my dance experiences and my um so I would do ballet at a um school in Glendale and so I talked about that and I kind of tied that tied that into um getting in getting interested in dentistry and dental school so um you you can use a lot of things that are outside of dentistry or dental school and um tie that into your personal statement as well so you have to always you know keep an open mind and keep keep open doors for, um, you know, different, just so you can have, um, what do you call it, a well-rounded application so that you're not just a student. And then there is also research. So I did uh, biochemistry research, and um, I did that for about a year. I didn't publish or or create um, any posters or present, but I got a letter of recommendation from my PI, so that was a really big um, bonus or plus for me um, on top of learning a lot of biochemistry and being able to talk about that in my interviews. You, again, just to mention, I'm sure you guys know, but research is not um, required for dental school, but if you can get that experience, that's always a plus. Um, how did you make your application unique? So um, honestly, you just have to be yourself. Um, If you try to pretend to be something that you're not, it's gonna be really obvious. And if it's not obvious in your application, it will be obvious in your interviews. So don't try to, you know, cheat the system or lie or anything like that. As long as you're being true to yourself, they will see that and there, there's going to be a school that likes you and there are obviously going to be schools that don't like you. Not every school looks at the same things or values the same things as highly as other schools. So as long as you're yourself, you'll be able to, you know, land a school um, and know how to represent yourself in writing. So being able to talk to someone casually and in person and introducing yourself Um, to someone in person is very different than trying to introduce yourself and um, basically kind of like sell yourself to dental schools um, through writing. So you need to be kind of able to condense your writing and um, make it so that it sounds professional, but it also sounds unique to the way you speak. a lot of the um, little 
what do you call it, um, sections in the application have a limited word count. So you might think that, oh, I'm going to have to write essays trying to explain myself and who I am and why I did this and why I did that. But there's a lot. Um, actually, I found it harder to answer those questions, not because I had to write essays, but because I had to condense everything so much so that I could say everything I wanted to say in the amount of characters that they allowed. So writing is really important, basically, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. Um, number of schools I applied to, I applied to 10 schools. I tried to stay close to California. So um, I applied to USC, UCLA, Western University, um, UOP, UCSF, and then I applied to five out-of-state schools, um, which were or Oregon, which one was in Oregon, two were from Arizona, and then um, UNLV, and I applied to Tufts as well. So I'm going to touch on dental office exposure and what you should expect from dental office exposure. Um, you can never have too much. I had like a thousand or two thousand hours, um, but that's because I started right out of high school and I had this amazing opportunity and it just, you know, worked out so well. So I've been working at a dental office for maybe I should move this. I don't know. Okay, there we go. Um, so. I've been working at a dental office for four and a half years now, and um, it honestly, the more spine, more time you spend in a dental office, the more you'll learn and the more you'll feel confident into getting into dentistry. If you start shadowing or working at a dental office um, and you don't enjoy it and you kind of are not into what's happening to, in the day-to-day, -day, you know, life of a dentist, then maybe dentistry is not for you. So the more time you spend, the more confident you become in your decision and the the more you learn, honestly, because the, the, th the amount of information that I've learned in this four and a half years is just like, I can't even put it into words how much I've learned, but um, hand, you can never, Go wrong with hands-on experience and in-person experience. I know with COVID, it's a little tricky. There's, um, you know, virtual sessions and a bunch of other stuff, but try to get as much as you much exposure as you can, and as early as you can too, because it's never too early to start. Um, I started right out of high school, so I don't. There's no, you know, harm in starting as early as you can. And not every office is a good match. So I've heard from friends that, you know, they've shadowed at a dental office and it was very not the best environment because maybe the doctor wasn't explaining um, much or they were only allowed to stand in one area and they couldn't really see everything that was going on or it was just not a good you know, vibe or energy in the office. And so you need to kind of be open to trying different offices and not, you know, if you don't like the first office that you're in, that doesn't mean that you don't like dentistry. So if it's not, if it's the office that's, it's, that's the problem, maybe you should try a few other offices. And also remember, dental, dental schools want you to shadow or work or have experience in a general dental office, not a specialty so you might be really into orthodontics or um, oral surgery but you should be um, getting hours in a general dental office oops okay so uh, yeah so I started right out of high school I kind of got lucky in the office that I um, was able to work at because um, I I was looking to shadow, but I kind of got lucky in the sense that they were looking to hire a social, so I started off as a social media, um, I guess, manager. I was like taking pictures and videos of dental procedures and posting on YouTube and um, Instagram. And then over time, 
um, you know, the, the doctor knew that I wanted to be um, a dentist as well, and I was going to go into dental school. So he kind of started showing me the different things that, you know, uh, dental assistants do or the front desk does. So I started picking up phone calls and um, booking appointments, and then I started assisting. So I kind of got lucky in the sense that I it was really hands-on, like right off the bat, and I was I was learning and um, and as well as getting paid at the same time. So it was just a very lucky experience for me. Um, and it was very hands-on and mentally stimulating. Like every procedure that the doctor did, he would explain to me what's going on. So I was learning each procedure as it was happening and I was seeing everything, you know, right there as I was assisting. So um, try to find an office that you feel very comfortable in and that you can um, maybe possibly get hands on with as well, because I know that there was um, a few of my friends who did shadowing, but the doctor let them, you know, suction and be chair side for certain procedures. So if you can get a dentist that understands where you're coming from and allows you to help out, possibly, that's the best place you can be in, I think. Uh, yeah, make sure you're shadowing or working at a general dental practice, like I said. Community service. So um, with community service, you it has no, it doesn't have to have anything to do with um, dentistry. So you don't have to be, um, you know, doing volunteering at some dental uh, organization or anything like that. So you can do um, feeding the homeless or, you know, uh, there's like a group that goes and plants trees or stuff like that. So you don't have to have anything, um, to, it doesn't have to do with dentistry. So anything that you're interested in, you should do. So do something you like, don't do something just because it's dental related because your whole app can't be about just dentistry and dental stuff. So as you, as, as you build, your application you want to show them what type of person you are so um so i personally was interested in helping the um children so school on wheels is a organization that is um helping to tutor homeless children so i was a part of that and then cochar is another organization that helps with um children that have a um, lifelong disease or, um, you know, chronic illness. And so they allow for people to, um, coach or teach certain activities. So for me, I was teaching ballet because I had taken ballet for about 10 years by then. So I was, um, like a ballet teacher at two of my, um, at two, people's that two children's houses so um those are their websites if you want to check them out it was not a hard um like hard what do you call it, process to get into um you just have to watch a few videos and sign a few papers and get background checks um but it was it was a really nice experience and so um do something that you like so i like to help children and I talked about that in my application so if you like to help the homeless if you like to help children if you like to plant trees if you like nature if you like going to church like there's a bunch of different ways that you can volunteer um, and then just be consistent don't volunteer like once every three months because that's not gonna like resonate very well on your application so make sure you're consistent. So do it every week or every month um, or every other day, whatever is, you know, whatever works for your schedule. Okay, so the DAT. So how I studied. I studied for three months during the summer of my junior year. So I am currently in a gap year. I will be starting dental school this August. Um, but yeah, so I took a gap year. So I studied for my DAT uh, summer of junior year. And then I applied last cycle. So I applied 
like June 2020. Um, so I studied using DAT Bootcamp and DAT Destroyer, as well as an in-person class that was available near UCLA. Um, it was called Swartwood, if you want to look into that as well. Um, so the best um, mode of study equipment or study, um, you know, what do you call it? Study. The best way that I studied was through DAT Bootcamp, basically. So DAT Bootcamp has different packages that you can um, subscribe to. I think I used just the basic one and it did amazing for me. Um, it has a lot of practice questions and it it looks a lot like the actual DAT. So I think I would recommend the DAT Bootcamp the most. Um, it even has a schedule for you. I think it's like a two and a half or three month schedule of studying that they have listed and they have different courses or uh, not courses, but um, different videos that you watch every day and then you have to take notes and study. And so it's kind of like a, like a, like a, um, virtual classroom basically, which is great during COVID anyways, but, um, DAT bootcamp was great. DAT destroyer. Um, it was not for me. Uh, it was a little too hard. It's, it was like harder than the actual DAT or harder than the material that you were going to be tested on. So I found it to be kind of discouraging because I do the, I do DAT bootcamp and I'd be totally fine and I'd be doing, you know, average and doing good. And then I'd take the DAT destroyer books and I'd open one up and I'd start, you know, answering questions and getting them all wrong. And I was like, am I gonna <laughs> fail the DAT because I can't get anything um, right in the DAT destroyer books, but um, I just think that the DAT destroyer was a little too hard. The thinking with the DAT destroyer was if you can answer super hard questions, you can answer a little bit easier questions, but it kind of just messed with me and made me feel like I didn't know anything. So it kind of stressed me out, but you can definitely try DAT destroyer as well. Um, they're just books and, with a bunch of questions and a few YouTube um, videos that you watch as well with them. And then Swartwood was just an in-person class. Um, I took it just to play it safe because I didn't want to, I really just wanted to be super prepared for the DAT because I was not about to take it twice. Um, so I took it once and, um, so, and I knew the way that I learned the best was if I had somebody talking and showing me things directly, like a classroom type setting. So I just wanted to reinforce everything that I've learned through DAT Bootcamp and Destroyer with an in-person class. So that's the reason why I took Sortwood. And then some tips is to be consistent, study every day um, or every other day or however, I don't know, however much you study, but I studied like eight hours every single day, like no days off. I'd maybe take like half a Sunday off every week but um that's just how I would study I, I I needed the whole three months and I needed eight hours every day not not everyone's like that you might just do fine with two months you might need eight months you might need six months everyone's different but just try to be consistent in uh what you're studying because if you start studying and then you stop and then you start studying again you're gonna forget like the things you started studying for in the beginning um, so try to be consistent, stay consistent, set a date and don't change it. Um, I know a lot of people that put a date in or don't put a date in and they're just like, oh, I'm just going to keep studying until I feel ready. But you just never feel ready. It's just never going to happen. You just, you just have to say, okay, this is a date. I'm going to take it and you just have to go and take it. Um, I don't think anybody feels ready for the TAT. Um, so you just take, set a date and try to stay with that. And then do practice problems and exams. Um, the DAT bootcamp has a lot. Swartwood also had a lot of um, problems and examples. Uh, Destroyer is like full of questions. So the more practice problems you do, the more comfortable you'll become with the types of questions that you'll see on the DAT. And focus on what you don't know. Um, I know it's easy to do questions that you like to do. 
um, or that you understand. But the hard part is once you start getting into like near the end of your studying, you need to go back and see what types of questions you have like constantly missed. So focus on those types of questions. Don't focus on what you've been getting right. Um, and then also change the location of where you study. It gets really hard to study in one place. So I would take my stuff outside, as you can see in the picture, and like just set up a different study spots that you can go to and stay focused in because it's hard to stay focused in just one single spot. Um, gap year. So I'm currently in my gap year right now. Um, I'm working at a dental office full time, the same dental office that I started in high school or out of high school. Um, I continue to volunteer. I recently stopped, but um, I was volunteering every weekend. Um, and then attend, I attended multiple, attended multiple webinars. So um, initially, when I started my gap year, I was still applying to dental school. So I was still working on the app. And um, a lot of webinars helped me a lot of dental schools did webinars that helped me. So be on the lookout for webinars and different, um, uh, what do you call it? Different webinar seminars, information material, um, stuff like this I think is great. Um, so the more you stay informed through webinars, the better off you will be. And then I started different small side projects because COVID, you can't do anything. So you start projects for yourself. Um, so I've been doing some presentations like these. Um, I started a YouTube channel. Um, I've been building my Instagram presence, stuff like that, and keeping busy. Um, and I've been also getting things in order to transition into dental school. So I'm actually going to be moving closer to USC just so, you know, I can focus strictly on school. And so I've been looking for apartments and things like that. Advice on staying motivated. Okay, so how bad do you really want it? It really comes down to what you're willing to do and how much you're willing to do and for how long you're willing to do it. Um, and basically, if you really set your mind to achieving something, whether it be dental school or anything else in life, I think you can do it. Um, just as a example, my first, I, I took calculus in freshman year of my undergrad and I failed the first exam, like failed, like, I don't even remember the percentage, but it was very bad. And I told myself, there's no way that I'm going to jeopardize, you know, going into dental school. So I started going to tutoring. I started doing extra problems. I started going to office hours and just did anything that I could just to be sure that my transcript wasn't going to look bad or, or get jeopardized my um, GPA. So if you really want it bad, you'll do almost everything to <laughs> get it um, in your power. So think of why you started this journey and keep that alive. So a lot of times when, you know, you're doing your day-to-day -day things, you forget why you're even doing what you're doing, why you're even studying 24 seven. Um, but if you just take a step back and realize, why do you want to go to, why do you want to go to dental school? Why you want to, why do you want to do dentistry? Why not another profession? And if you keep that in your mind every day and, you know, kind of focus on that, you'll, you know, it'll make you more motivated into doing your day-to-day -day tasks. Um, remember the bigger picture, again, kind of like remembering why you started. Um, take a step back a few, like a few times a week and really look at everything in like a bigger picture. Because I know when you're studying, you always are just so zoomed in to that moment and that just that, you know, class and that teacher and that assignment but if you just step back and look at everything as a whole it kind of changes the way you you're viewing your assignment so um take a step back sometimes is a, is a good um way to stay motivated and then also try to stay positive and keep balance in your life don't always you know 
um, hide away in your room and study, um, try to find time to do things for yourself or with your friends um, or things that you enjoy like dance or sports or whatever it may be. Okay, Q and A. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start the Q&A now. So the first question that we have is, how long did it take you to adapt to studying for dental school? Did you have any, did you have to change your studying habits often? I am not in dental school yet, so I can't really answer that question, but I'm sure that because USC is a PBL-based system where you have to kind of learn things yourself and in a with your by yourself and in a group I'm sure my habits are going to have to change in that sense but um in sense in the sense of lectures I think that I might keep the same um way that I've been studying the second question says how does the match system work for dental school um, that is for specialties. I'm not sure how that works, but um, in terms of just generally applying to dental school, um, there's just the access application. So you log in and you fill out a bunch of questions and you pick the schools straight off of that portal. And then um, that sends your application to all the schools that you applied to. So it's just one portal that you kind of fill out and then you might get secondary questions later on through your email but um, matching I think is with specialties and I'm not too sure about how that works. Have you always wanted to go into dentistry or did you change career paths? I have always wanted to go to dentistry. I as a kid I would make my parents lay down on the bed so I can just work on their teeth and I'd pretend to be a dentist as like a six-year-old. Um, and that's always been the case and I've always liked dentistry and I've always wanted to get into dental school. So I don't, I, I haven't really changed <laughs> much since I was like six. <laughs> Is there something you wish you'd had looked into when deciding which schools to apply and accept? Mm, that's a good question. I think I did a pretty good job um, in terms of researching the schools that I apply to. Um, make sure you look at their prerequisites because um, if you're still in school and if you're still fulfilling the prerequisites, just make sure that you know you have everything in order because the schools, Every school has different prerequisites. Most of them are the same. You know, you need your OCHEM, your GenCHEM, and your bio and all those stuff. But there are certain schools that require psychology and a bunch of other prerequisites. So make sure you have that in order because it's going to be very stressful if you're missing a class and then you're trying to scramble and figure out if you can get, a, get it somewhere, you know, get the class somewhere before it's too late. What was something you didn't expect during interviews? What are some things we should focus on while preparing for them? Interviews were a very stressful time. Um, so the way I studied for, or I prepared for interviews was mainly through the Student Doctor Network site. Um, they have a section for each school um, under interviews. Um, or interview questions and there's like a bunch of questions that people put up from each school um, surprisingly there's a lot of different types of questions that each school asks so um, so for example if you're do if you have a UCLA interview um, you would go to the UCLA student doctor network platform look at look under the interview tabs and there's a bunch of questions that um, students have shared you know that they've been asked so it's a good way to prepare because a lot of times um they ask about like moral types of questions or like questions about um when was the last time or when when was the time that this happened or 
um, give an example of this. So if you're put on the spot like that, it's a little hard to like quickly come up with an example or a time where, you know, you can bring up that's a good example of what they're asking for. So um, that helped me because um, I skimmed through and I, I kind of got a sense of what types of questions they might ask and what I should prepare for. Um, other than that, be yourself. Um, don't try to force or fake anything because it, it will really show like if you're if you're being too over enthusiastic or if you're being super dry like it, it shows you just have to be be in a good state of mind but don't like go over don't overkill it don't don't be too you know oh my god hi how are you <laughs> um just try to be your normal self honestly well it'll show it'll show through that you know you're being authentic and they'll and they like that so yeah. was usc your top dental school choice i got i got asked a lot what's my number one dental school um or choice of dental school but um i never really had a number one i just knew that i wanted to stay close to home and I looked at a few schools nearby. USC was definitely my top three. Um, but I didn't have like number one that like a school that I was just fully obsessed with originally. Like I just I didn't really have that one school that I could say is like my number one school. But I'm happy that I got into USC. <laughs> Are there any specialties that you're considering right now? Um, I'm keeping the door open to different specialty options, but, um, I like kids, as I mentioned, so pediatric dentistry, maybe, um, yeah, I think I'd stick, I'll stick with general because with general, you have the freedom to choose what you want to focus on. Um, and, you know, as a general dentist, you're taught everything from ortho to, I guess, surgery. Um, but it's just based off of what you're comfortable in doing and, you know, the different seminars that you take as a dentist to, um, you know, get better at a certain special specialty. Um, so I probably will stay as a general, but I don't know. I like kids. <laughs> uh, do you have any tips for approaching a dentist to shadow them during COVID-19? It's really hard with COVID. Um, I would say try to email them, although I know a lot of doctors don't look at their emails, um, and a lot of times they'll just go to trash. Um, but I try to email them, see if you could get a response from the front desk or from the doctor. Um, if you can't, try to go go in person of course, with a mask on, um, maybe call them or first, okay, so first email them, then try calling them. And then if all else fails, try to go to the office in person and maybe give them a resume and explain the situation and that you'd want to shadow and if it's possible during this time. Um, a lot of doctors are understanding because they, they were in the same shoes as you are. Um, but you know, if they don't, then you just you just have to keep looking. Uh, did you have any trouble pacing yourself during the actual exam? Um, the DAT, right? So I. So it was all going great until I hit the perceptual ability um, section, which is the one with all the shapes and, you know, shapes and figures and corners. And I don't even know, there was like a, a lot of things there. But um, the PAT, I did fall behind. I actually had to guess on a lot of the questions on the PAT to finish it. And that is why my score for the PAT was not great. Um, but other than that, the rest of the sections were pretty okay. You just have to practice it when you're studying, um, take an actual test from, 
from beginning to end and um, see how much like see how it is in real time because you can study as many questions as you want but unless you take a real timed practice exam like you won't understand the you know how fast you should go or how fast you should stay um, you know it's just you just have to practice the timing too and how many times are you able to take DAT? You can take the DAT, I think, up to three or three times, I think. Um, they don't like you taking the DAT um, too much unless you're improving a lot by each with each um, try. Um, but yeah, so if you take the first one and let's say you get a average of 18 and then you take it again and you get an average of 18 or 19 or something like that if you don't if you don't consistently improve they don't like that they, they will ask you why did you take it again if you're gonna get the same you know like why didn't you study more like what happened so if you're interviewing and if you send if you're gonna send in you know both the exams and they see that it's kind of not a good representation of you if you if you don't improve on the next exam that you take do you think majoring in something other than a science major is hard to manage in terms of meeting the course prerequisites for dental school i don't think so i know a lot of people that were able to do it and they actually enjoyed it um i think just with biology it, or, or with the science science major, it's a little easier because you don't have to worry about juggling all the prereqs. Pre um, I'm not too sure how difficult it is because I, I was a bio major, so it was really easy for me. Um, but I, from what I've heard from friends, I they didn't have a problem. They just had to make sure that they were hitting all the prereqs before they applied. What are some tips when trying to write your personal statement? Um, so I had to like start re start my personal statement like 10 times, no, like, yeah, 10 times. Um, so it's just, it's, oh, what tips do I have? It's, it's such a pain. <laughs> um, I would say just keep writing. So if you start if you started off some way and you think it's going good tomorrow or the next day you go you come back you look at it and you say this is terrible you start again just keep writing everything that comes to your mind in that moment just keep writing it down on paper um, it's gonna take more than one one draft I can promise you that if it if it's not more than one draft I feel like you might have done something wrong. Um, but just keep writing. That's, that's the way I did it. I, I, t I did like 10 tries and each time I was like, this is not it. This is not it. This is not it. I think the hardest one, the hardest thing to do is get it, get a good, good intro, um, and a good hook because that's one thing that will really catch, um, the person reading your paper because they're going to be reading thousands of applications and thousands of personal statements. So you really want to stand out with your personal statement. So you really want to catch their attention um, and kind of break the monotony of, you know, every other personal statement that they've seen. Um, so yeah, start off with a good hook, start off strong and strong. Um, don't make it all only about dentistry try to connect it to something more personal so they know who you are and what you've been through and what type of person you are so don't just be talking about I want to go to dental school dentistry is amazing blah 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 <laughs> um, try to kind of relate it more t to you and your life um, yeah it's difficult I think that's all the questions we have for today. So thank you so much for joining us. And we're honored to learn about your journey. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm just put out my Instagram and YouTube. And if you guys want to reach out or ask any questions personally, um, I don't have my school email yet, so I can't put my email down. But you can feel free to DM me or 
message me, um, whatever you'd like with any other questions. <laughs>